dear students now we are going to discuss about the topic classification of magnetic materials and its comparison let's start with the sources of magnetic field there are two major sources available to produce magnetic field one is current carrying conductor can produce magnetic field around it another one is natural magnet can produce magnetic field around it in nature most of these substances exhibit magnetic efforts in it how is it possible yes in general an electron revolving around the nucleus of its atom forms a tiny electric current loop correct then it produces a magnetic field so naturally most of the substances exhibit the magnetic effects so from this we can make a definition of magnetic materials so magnetic materials or materials that are either attracted or repelled when placed in an external magnetic field yes if i am going to place a magnetic not only magnetic material if i am going to place any substance any material okay in an external magnetic field it can be either attracted or repelled correct so this substances are called as magnetic material depending on their magnetic behavior the substances can be classified as three major categories as diamagnetic paramagnetic and ferromagnetic okay so let's see the comparison between these three magnetic materials so let's consider this comparison so diamagnetic paramagnetic and ferromagnetic so what is diamagnetic so diamagnetic or the substances which are feebly repelled by a magnet that is what so diamagnetic magnetics is not having the magnetic properties in it next paramagnetic these are the substances which are feebly attracted by a magnet that is not strongly attracted it is feebly attracted by a magnet third category is that is that is ferromagnetic so here the substances sort strongly attracted by a magnet so for example here we can say for the diamagnetic so that materials are feebly repelled by a magnet for example gold copper silver air water antimony bismuth etc so this all are the examples of paramagnetic aluminium oxygen platinum etc even we can feel that paramagnetic in the oxygen itself right so another one is ferromagnetic ferromagnetic materials that is iron nickel cobalt etc okay this all are the few examples of this different types of magnetic materials so how we, how do we say this feebly repelled so for that we can take this example experiment okay so actually there is one magnetic field available so already available external magnetic field is there if i am going to place this diamagnetic that is either a silver or coal whatever it may be in this external magnetic field what will happen means the magnetic forces lines of forces are getting out of this substance okay so when the substance is placed in the magnetic field the lines of force tend to avoid it it is not going through this material it is just going to avoid the lines of force are just trying to avoid the substance okay so that is what the feed the ripple because that substance itself ripple that lines of forces okay so here we can consider the second one so here we are having the paramagnetic material aluminium or platinum any material so already external magnetic field is there if i am going to place this substance in the external magnetic field what will happen means the lines of force prefer to pass through the substance rather than the air okay so few lines are getting attracted towards this substance towards this material that is what paramagnetic that is what feebly attracted okay so few lines are getting passed through it okay so in case of ferromagnetic material so there is already magnetic external magnetic field is available if i am going to place an iron rod okay iron rod or nickel whatever it may be a strong ferromagnetic material in this external magnetic field what will happen 
so the lines of force tend to crowd into it so all those lines are attracted towards the substance okay that's why it's called as strongly attracted by a magnet do you all understand so it is feebly repelled it is feebly attracted it is strongly attracted so here next relative permeability what is permeability it defines the magnetic properties of the material correct so here for this diamagnetic material this magnetic property is too low so its relative permeability is also very less for example copper its value is around 0.00001 correct that relative permeability for the copper is very low in case of paramagnetic its relative permeability value is greater than 1 correct so next one is al ferro ferro here ferromagnetic materials the relative permeability is far greater than so i can give you some example for this permeability so here uh, diamagnetic okay so we can take some example like silver okay if it is silver its relative permeability value is 0 0.999998 it is less than 1 in case of paramagnetic material for example we can say aluminium okay if aluminium means aluminium's relative permeability is around 1.0002 it is little bit greater than the 1 in case of ferromagnetic okay so example it is uh, nickel okay so if i am kind of going to consider the nickel its value of this ferromagnetic material is 600 around 600 it is far greater than this one so permeability defines the magnetic properties of the material magnetic effects of the material itself okay so this is what the three comparisons of relative permeability among these three types so next direction of magnetization is opposite to the external magnetic field so as i as we already discussed right so here the direction of magnetization so if i'm going to place my substance in the external magnetic field if both are having the same direction so both will be attract and moving towards the same direction so here it is its magnet substance magnetization is just opposite to the external field so it is avoiding the line of force so here the direction of magnetization for diamagnetic material is opposite to the external magnetic field so here in paramagnetic field same direction as the external magnetic field like the same thing ferromagnetic same direction okay so if external field is south to north means here this substance is also like south to north so all the fields are moving in the same direction okay so next one is no spin alignment what is this spin alignment so spin alignment here it is nothing but magnetic dipole moment okay so in the magnetization properties this magnetic dipole is very very important so here in this dipole diamagnetic there is no spin alignment magnetic dipole alignment because this magnetic dipole uh, is the reason to create the magnetization in it okay so here in this para magnetic material it is a random alignment here it is that's why it can give a little bit magnetic effort so here in this ferromagnetic material here the alignment magnetic dipole moment uh, dipole alignment should be parallel that's why we can for example parallel means we can say it is the um, ferromagnetic materials means north to south north to south so all the dipoles are parallelly aligned north to south north to south so here it is not it is south means here this dipole are here in this random alignment we can say if it is the random alignment it can be like this any randomly aligned okay that's why it is feebly attracted it is strongly attracted here there is no alignment nothing alignment is there in this one okay that's why it is feebly repelled okay so next one is susceptibility what is susceptibility so susceptibility means what is a measure of how much a material will become magnetized in an applied magnetic field correct so how much a material will become magnetized permeability defines its magnetic property properties okay magnetic property naturally available in it so susceptibility means it's a measure of how much a material will become magnetized 
in an applied magnetic field. So here in this diamagnetic material, susceptibility is low, paramagnetic is high, ferromagnetic is very high. Okay. So next one is compared with the temperature. There are three magnetic materials, right? So the temperature increases, what will happen? If temperature decreases, what will happen? Let's see with this. So properties of this diamagnetic materials do not change with temperature. It, it is always behaving the same way. Correct. That means it is independent of the temperature. Here in case of paramagnetic material, they lost their magnetic properties with rise in temperature. Okay. If temperature increases, okay. If temperature increases means it will become the same paramagnetic material will become diamagnetic material. You understand? So here diamagnetic material is independent with the temperature. But here in this paramagnetic material, if temperature increases, this paramagnetic material lost their magnetic properties. That means it behaves like a diamagnetic material. Okay. Example, we can take the aluminium. Okay. So aluminium is there. This aluminium is keep on increasing with the temperature. So the temperature of this aluminium is increased. It will behave like a diamagnetic instead of paramagnetic. So next one is ferro. If temperature decreases, if it is lower than the Curie point, it behaves like a paramagnetic. So what is this Curie point? For this Curie point, we should note that Curie's law. What is Curie's law? That susceptibility is indirectly proportional to the, inversely proportional to the temperature. Okay, so that means if temperature increases, correct, its susceptibility is decreases. So here this Curie point means, this Curie point is very important. This is the maximum amount of temperature. What's that? It's the maximum amount of temperature at which the material start to change its magnetic behavior. That is the Curie point. If the temperature is less than Curie point, that material behaves like a paramagnetic instead of ferromagnetic. So, this all are the major classification of magnetic materials.